All right, today we're going to continue by looking at graphing of these angles, but we're going to look at the reference angle. So we're going to start by graphing the angle in standard form. So if I want to graph 160 degrees, we know this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, this is 360. So if I want to be at 160, I'm going to be just shy here. So I go, this is my terminal side. We always start at that zero, show the direction that we're moving, which way are we rotating, and from here to here, this is representing our 160 degree angle. Now the reference angle is the angle made with the x-axis. Really important that we're always looking at from the terminal side to the closest x-axis not the y-axis, we're never going to go to the y-axis. So we think to ourselves, if it's from here to here is 160, what is this angle measure? Well, we're just 20 degrees shy of 180, which means this is gonna be 20 degrees. So here, our reference angle is equal to 20 degrees. The key is that the reference angle always goes from the terminal side to the x-axis. So our next one, we've got 230, so we've got 90, 180, 270, 360, 30 degree, 230. So it's going to be in between 180 and 270. You can either think about the fact that 230 is 50 degrees more than 180, or you can think about the fact that 230 is 40 degrees shy of 270. However you want to think about where that position is. Your angle of 230 in standard form, we always start our arrow at zero. We go all the way around to that terminal side, and that's our 230 degree angle marker. Now your reference angle isn't to the closest axis, it's always to the x-axis. So the reference angle in this case is from here to here. So we wanna find out the distance between the x-axis and that terminal side. If I'm at 230, remember that this is 50 degrees past 180. So the distance between the x-axis and our terminal side is 50 degrees, making our reference angle 50 degrees. Now the next one, here come those radians. So yes, you can go ahead and you can label pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, but I know that you are gonna convert this, most of you. The pi's cancel, five times 180 divided by three. We're gonna end up with a 300 degree angle. Remember, the same thing, just a different format, it's the same position. So 300 degrees is going to be 30 degrees past 270. So starting at zero, all the way around, that is our 300 degree angle. The reference angle is between the terminal side and the x-axis, not the closest axis, the x-axis. And if this is 300, we know that we're only 60 degrees shy of 360, so the reference angle is 60 degrees. Now, if you put 60 degrees down on a quiz or a test, it will be wrong. Although it is 60 degrees, if I start in radians, then your answer must be radians. So although it is 60 degrees, degrees isn't what I'm looking for, so then I have to take that reference angle and I have to convert it back into radians. 60 divided by 180, we end up with pi over three. So in this case, your reference angle is gonna be pi over three. That is the number one mistake. You get so used to converting everything to degrees, which is completely fine, but if the question starts in radians, your answer must be in radians. So after you convert to degrees for your final answer, you've got to remember to convert back into those radians. All right, now we're going to look at graphing in a little bit different of a perspective. 
we're going to evaluate the six trig functions given a point. So last year in geometry, you spent a lot of time plotting points. So if I plot a point, let's say that point is going to be at right here. That point is at x comma y. The x distance is how much you're moving horizontally. The y distance is how much you are moving vertically. Now what we're going to add in here is we're going to add in making this a right triangle by adding this place right here. And if you think about this is coming from a circle, which means from the origin to that point, this is going to be the radius of your circle. Now our reference angle, which we just talked about, the reference angle is going to go from that terminal side, which we're going to treat that radius as our terminal side. This is going to be our reference angle, always from the side representing the radius down to the x-axis. So when we go over, we want to evaluate our six trig functions. Sine, we know, is opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse comes with a right angle. If we're going horizontally and then vertically, those are always going to meet at that right angle. So opposite the reference angle is going to be y over the hypotenuse, which is our radius in this case. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be x over r. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, all in reference to that reference angle coming from the origin. And here are our three new trig functions, which is just the reciprocals. So cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. So that's going to be R over Y. This is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And this is going to be adjacent over opposite. Those are going to be your six trig functions. Again, remember that your theta, your angle that you're referencing in the sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, is that reference angle coming from the origin. When we go to evaluate given points, when we know what the x and y is, we want to solve for the hypotenuse. And remember that we have a right angle here. So anytime you're missing any of the pieces, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and evaluate our six trig functions. Our first point is 5, 12. So we're going to go right 5, up 12, and there's going to be our point. Here is that third side. Here's our reference angle. Here's our right angle. A horizontal movement and a vertical movement, those aren't diagonals, perfect horizontal, perfect vertical, is always going to meet to form perp or perpendicular lines at right angle. Now this is going to be our radius. That's the hypotenuse of our triangle. So to find that missing side, because you do have to find that missing side, you can't just leave it as r. We do the Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to r squared. 25 plus 144. That gives us our radius squared as 169. We square root. And that missing third side length is going to be 13. So the six trig functions that we have, we've got sine of theta. So opposite over hypotenuse gives us 12 over 13. The cosecant is the reciprocal of that, so that becomes 13 over 12. Cosine of theta, that's adjacent, so next to our theta is 5 over the hypotenuse. Secant is the reciprocal of that, giving us 13 over 5. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, 12 over 5 and cotangent, therefore, is a reciprocal of that of 5 over 12. All right, we've got one more to go. So we are plotting the point negative 2, negative 6. From the origin, we're going left 2, 
So left is negative. We are going down 6, negative 6. To finish off our triangle from the origin to that point of negative 2, negative 6, our right angle is where the horizontal and the vertical angle meet. Our reference angle is going to be the angle in our triangle coming from the origin. So now we need to find the hypotenuse. So we've got a negative 2 squared plus a negative 6 squared is equal to that radius squared. 4 plus 36, that gives us 40. We're going to use exact answers. We're not going to use decimals. So if you forgot, you're going to use your factor tree. 4 and 10, 2 and 2, 2 and 5. That's going to create, your radius is going to be 2 square root 10. So our missing piece here is 2 root 10. We need those six trig functions. So we start off with sine of theta. Opposite of theta is a negative 6. The negative does matter, so you want to make sure that you have the negative 2 and negative 6. Your hypotenuse is 2 root 10. So this problem is the same idea as the last, just one extra complication, and that's just harder algebra 1 skills. We have to rationalize the denominator. First, I see that the 2 goes into the 6 three times, and then we rationalize. So that gives me a negative 3 root 10 all over 10. That's the sine of theta. Cosecant is the reciprocal of that. Now, I'm not going to take the reciprocal of my answer. I could if I wanted to, but that's going to be more work. So I look at where I started, and I do the reciprocal of that. I started with flipping here. So that 2 root 10 goes to the numerator, the negative 6 goes to the denominator, and then all I have to do is simplify there. So your cosecant here is the square root of 10 over a negative 3. And you know it doesn't matter if you write your negative in the numerator, in the denominator, or out front, as long as you only have one negative sign. Our cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Again, those twos cancel. So when we rationalize here, multiply top and bottom by root 10, that becomes a negative square root of 10 all over 10. The secant is the reciprocal, so we have 2 root 10 over negative 2, leaving us with square root of 10. Oops, we don't even have a fraction left. So that's just going to be the negative square root of 10, because those 2's canceled. Last set, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so a negative 6 over a negative 2. That simplifies down to a positive 3, and your cotangent is a negative 6, or a negative 2 over a negative 6, reducing down to a positive 1 third. Alright, and that is it for your video on reference angles and evaluating trig functions from a given point.